Gotta have feet. You will forgive me if you hear a little twinkle of pride in my voice tonight. This is Barry Farber. Sarah's off tonight. Uh, because I am proud of the booking uh, that we have achieved today. I am proud of the fact that we have Damien Hausman on and the reason we have Damien Hausman on. He has not recently written a book, starred in a movie, uh, won a special election uh, against a highly favored Democrat. That's not the only way you get to be a guest on talk radio. You can do it with sheer imaginuity, sheer brain power. Damien, this is a very short segment, so don't get into anything right now, but welcome to these proceedings. Uh, and I don't know if you're a regular watcher of Fox Evening News, 6 p.m. Eastern. Sarah and I always watch it, mostly for Charles Krauthammer, but we love the whole gang. And they really know how to hurt somebody. On Friday nights, when they, the last two real segments are the gang, the Fox All-Stars, and they have a pool of about eight or nine people, and they rotate three per, per show. And they um, uh, usually have two solid topics and one topic per segment. But on Friday nights, they have what they call a lightning round. And they really know how to hurt people <laughs> skillfully and politely at Fox. One of the questions in the lightning round tonight was, which Obama scandal is more likely to hurt him most? in his bid for re-election, Fast and Furious or Solyndra, and I forget the name of the newest one where they apparently pressured an Air Force general uh, to change his testimony uh, before Congress. Uh, but uh, would you like to weigh in on that? Which ongoing scandal do you think is likely to be most consequential uh, in Obama's re-election bid? Thanks, Barry, uh, and I appreciate uh, your invitation. This is an unexpected pleasure. And as far as which, uh, as far as which scandal, with the Obama administration, we have a real feast of uh, scandals. And I mean, that doesn't even include the birth certificate scandal. But uh, uh, I think Solyndra is enough of one, which could have taken care of uh, virtually any other uh, president. Uh, Damien, positively brilliant. Um, uh, do these things just occur to you, or do you sit down with a pen and yellow pad and draw diagrams? It was an odd thing this time. Uh, I, I was uh, inundated, like everybody has, on the Solyndra affair, where uh, more than half a billion dollars uh, was uh, given to a company that was engaged in um, uh, green energy. Uh, from what I understand, they were making... Um, solar panels, and uh, they, they got a loan guarantee and money from the government, and all of this money uh, has disappeared since uh, the company went out of business just a short time after they got the money. And every day, uh, just like that old Chinese water trick, every day, drip, 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 today... Uh, we learned that the Bush administration uh, had such serious reservations about Solyndra that uh, one of the big shots emailed another one saying, let's, let's end it with Solyndra. In other words, there, there was a big cloud over this that the administration had to ignore to make those deals with Solyndra. That's true. And as soon as the Obama administration took office, they put the uh, loan guarantees and the loans to Solyndra on a fast track. And uh, uh, they're not the only one. In fact, uh, several others have received them and also gone under. And the Department of Energy has another two weeks remaining in the, um, in, in the uh, uh, Recovery Act money, uh, or the, it will be uh, lost, in other words, given back to the taxpayers. So they really want to spend it, and I understand they've got at least nine uh, companies, uh, maybe 15, uh, that they want to uh, guarantee funds to. I understand the guarantees are worth $9 billion, and the actual federal funds are $3 billion that, uh, that, the, that the taxpayers are on the hook for. Well, you know, in politics, it's not what is, it's what your enemies can make of what is. Um, 
aren't the Democrats smart enough to realize what this looks like and smells like? I mean, there should have been red flags and red lights and blazing candles and loud sirens at every point here. Well, I wonder if they are also thinking that they've only got 14 months left to loot the Treasury, and uh, they better get busy. Mm. In, uh, in my own theory... Uh, all of this and the several other companies that went uh, that went out of business also that received uh, funds, uh, including the one in Seattle that was weatherizing homes. They managed to do three homes and then went out of business. There wasn't much of a market for it, but that's universally true amongst all of these green energy uh, firms that was being aided by the government. Uh, their technology is either uh, out of place, doesn't work. Uh, or is undersold. In the case of Solyndra, they were being undersold in their solar panels by China, and they knew that when they got the money. Mm-hmm. And so all of this reminded me of a movie that I saw long ago, uh, the first Mel Brooks movie, The Producers. Uh, Max Bialystok was producing plays, and he conned old ladies out of their money. And, now, uh, wait, 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 forgive me. Sure. You're, giving, you're giving me the plot now of that Mel Brooks movie, The Producers. Yes. Okay, go ahead. Now, in other words, uh, there, there was no real Mr. Bialystok who really ripped off old lady. This is now the story. That's right. This is, this is okay. what happened in the movie. Okay, and okay. This, and I was reminded of this when I started to see these uh, energy firms, uh, these green energy firms, clean energy firms, renewable energy firms, getting federal help, and then go under. And a lot of them seem to have uh, 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 ties to Obama and the Democratic Party anyway as uh, contri- major contributors and bundlers of money. Uh, and that's what made me think of uh, the producers. Uh, the producer, Max Bialystok, conned little old ladies out of their money. And, in fact, in the last one that he did, he was oversubscribed. But then when it failed on, the, on its opening night... Uh, he kept the money, and uh, nobody was the wiser. It was it was a small error, but then along came his uh, accountant Leo Bloom, who offhandedly said that if you intentionally make a film, uh, make a, a play uh, that's going to fail, uh, you can make more money that it, than if you have a, a play that's going to succeed. And so uh, Bialystok understood immediately and started raising funds for the worst possible script that could ever be put on a stage, Springtime for Hitler. <laughs> and, uh, and what happened? Well, <laughs> what happened is that he, he, did, he made a lot of money, uh, got a lot of uh, little old ladies to contribute, and, uh, and he was sure that on opening night he would also have closing night. Uh, as it happened, uh, the audience which seemed to hate it at first, suddenly turned around, found that it was a, a funny comedy, and loved it. So it became a smash hit. Uh, as a result, the oversubscribed play uh, then could not return uh, uh, profits because they had one, two, three, four hundred percent uh, already given out, and so uh, people looking for their money couldn't be paid. And so Bialystok and, uh, and Bloom did their next play pr- production from prison. Oh, wow. And you um, uh, connected the dots and found out that uh, uh, Solyndra may have followed a similar trajectory. That's right. I, my, my theory on this uh, is that uh, Solyndra and the others uh, already knew that their technology was not going to sell, uh, but they had a perfect way to get money for it, uh, from the government or government guaranteed loans and all that had to happen after that is they go out of business and nobody's going to look for the money anymore mm. uh, man you really you you should not be allowed to think on takeoff and landing <laughs> uh, so.